Are you ready to blow your audience away with a great experience? Well, listen up. You've come to the right place. Grab your notepad and sit back. The show is ready to begin. Welcome to the Chris Rissy Podcast, where small business owners and entrepreneurs get firsthand tips and insight on creating ultimate personal experiences. Let's get this show on the road. Hey, this is Chris Rissy, and welcome to the Chris Rissy Podcast. Actually, you know what? Wait a second here. Welcome to the last episode of the Chris Rissy Podcast. Yep, it is the last episode for the Chris Rissy Podcast. You heard me right, and uh, but that's okay. That's okay. We don't we don't need to shed any tears or anything because we're actually doing a rename of the show, and that is because I never intended on this being the Chris Rissy Podcast. I, uh, the, the show is much more than just me. It's about everybody out there, everybody who I've had on my show and everybody else who has yet to come on the show to be interviewed and tell their story about their small business and how they're an entrepreneur and how they got started and what they've learned, what they can share with you. And that's, that's what the show is all about. It's all about the experiences that, that, you know, my interviewees have had that I've had that you've had and how they all are very similar and everything that we've learned. I mean, it can all, it it all needs to be put out there. And that's, that's what I want this show to be about. And that's what I'm all about. It's being the experience. If, if you want to make something of yourself, if you want to make something of your business, then you need to step out of your shell. You have to reach beyond and do something new. You have to find things out for yourself. You you can listen to others. You can listen to me on this show. You can listen to all their interviewees. You can listen to every other business podcast out there, but it doesn't matter. It's all just entertainment until you actually listen to the words and take action upon them. And that's when you have the experience. And so on this show, this show is all about creating creating that experience, being in your own story, being your own character, but understanding that everybody else is in the same boat. Everybody else is out there trying to have an experience. Everybody else has a story and everybody else is a character. We're all characters in each other's stories. And it's just this, it's, that's what our reality is for a small business owner. And, uh, you know, (laughs) I try to explain this in so many different ways and, uh, it's what I'm passionate about. And, you know, if it's my duty then to you, my listener to help you find this in yourself and make this for your life, for your business. And, um, yeah, it's it's what I've been enjoying in my life, it, and it hasn't been easy. Um, you know, it I, I'd say it's rarely easy, but it's a challenge worth, uh, you know, trying to accomplish to succeed, and and it makes life worth living. And maybe that makes me odd. Maybe that makes the people on my show a bit odd. Um, but maybe you are odd just like us. We're all oddballs together. <laughs> And that's okay. That's okay. It's it, it, it's it's not that we're odd. We're just different, and difference a good thing. So, anyways, you know, with with this being the last episode of the Chris Rissy podcast, I've got some changes I've got to make uh, going forward into future episodes, and we'll we'll get those changes made over time. But I will let you know that uh, this show is going to become be the experience because again, that's been my motto. That's what I'm all about. And I, I want to share that with you, with, with the audience, with the world. Let's let's be the experience. Let's be the experience for their, ourselves. Let's be the experience for everybody else that we connect with. So with that out of the way, you know, what are we going to do? This is, you know, to the time. This is episode 15. This is the time where I would typically have an inter- interview. This is an odd episode, but um you know, I, I don't have an interview today, and that's okay because I really want to tell you a bit more about me. Since you know we're we're done, we've got to ep- fifteen episodes of this podcast, 
and uh, it's been about things that that I've learned and can share, but it's also been about the stories of of my my colleagues and and my clients and everybody that that I have in my network. And, you know, it going to the next level for me is I want to grow my network. I want to have people on the show that I don't know that I want to get to know. And that's, you know, again, that's me stepping out and creating my own experience. If there's things in my life that I want to get to, the only way to do that is to take the next step, meet new people. I'm all about meeting new people. That's, you know, that's kind of how I feel like, you know, I was put on the planet to do is just to go meet people and listen and learn. And uh, maybe that's just being the entrepreneur. Um, you know, it, we need to constantly learn new things in order to survive the, the wilderness of entrepreneurialism. So, well, anyways, let's let's go ahead and dive in. I'm going to tell you a bit about my story, how I became an entrepreneur um, and why it was never very easy. And it's still not very easy. And it kind of goes back to, um, you know, I, I grew up in a family of entrepreneurs. My, my father's side of the family, it was, seems like everybody was a business owner. My dad was a business owner, multiple business owner. My, my grandfather was as well. Uh, his father started a, a business, you know, and it keeps going on. Uh, I've got um, uncles and cousins, you name it, that have all uh, started their own businesses and have been very successful with them. And it's just kind of a natural thing. You know, there's the debate. Are you born an entrepreneur? You know, I, I don't know that. Probably not. Um, I would I would say it's definitely a learned thing, but there's probably personality traits that that come out naturally for for certain people that that uh, lean towards being an entrepreneur. Uh, that's kind of the best way I could say that. So anyways, you know, I never thought of myself as actually ever owning a business or anything. I, I, I wanted to be an astronaut as a kid. I wanted to be a, a cosmologist, not a cosmetologist. My dad would always tease me when I told him I wanted to be a cosmologist. He would say, oh, you want to be a, a cosmetologist? which he described as being the, the person who did makeup for the, the stars and the planets. And so anyways, anyways, yeah, a little bit of uh, dad humor there that I had growing up. Um, but I, I never really saw myself creating or producing something, solving a problem, finding opportunity um, until about the age of 14. And the summer of that year, that was 1997, to give you an idea of how old I am, um, a neighborhood kid, uh, he was kind of known as the kid who, who did stuff on computers, uh, and on the internet. And, uh, myself and a friend of mine went over to his house and we saw firsthand the, the website that he had made and was earning money from. And that just, that, that was an epiphany. That was a turning point in my life. And it, and I, cause I saw what was happening in front of me and I was like, I could do that. I could do that. And I could, I could be better at it. And, uh, and, and I could, you know, push boundaries and do new things. And from that point on, um, every spare moment that I had, it was learning how to make websites. I, I think, you know, maybe the first website I ever made was a geo web, uh, geo cities website. Now geo cities is long gone. Um, but my website was, you know, again, it was about me, like how most uh, teenagers uh, make websites. It was about me and the things that I like to do. And it, and it was mostly video game stuff. And uh, um, I can still imagine in my, in my mind's eye, what that looked like. And, and uh, by today's standards, it was not very impressive. It was a website made in 1997. Um, but I learned how to do graphic design and I learned how to, to code properly and, and understanding of the difference between script and code and programming and all these different things. And, and it wasn't because I wanted to learn how to code. It was because I wanted to make a website that did something that people wanted to use. And, uh, you know, uh, after a couple of years being in high school and everything, I decided I wanted to create an online community for my friends and everybody in the high school. And this, uh, it, its name was Coolicious, and it started in 1999. Uh, and for a couple of years, uh, you know, it, it, it finally kind of gained some traction as I became a junior, senior, 
in high school. Um, and it was kind of the place where everybody went to hang out online because more and more kids were getting on the internet. They had computers at home and I mean, it had a discussion board. People had profiles, etc. It was, it was very much a Facebook a few years before Facebook. And, uh, I eventually graduated from high school and went to college. And at that point, I was getting very uninterested in doing the high school stuff. I wanted to do the college things. I wanted to go to the next level. And I really wanted to be that teenager who was, uh, you know, a successful online entrepreneur. I was reading stories about other people my age who were starting businesses and and we're, we're just we're just killing it. We're crushing it, if you would call it that. Um. And I was like, I can do that. That's 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 me. That's what I want to do. And so I set out um, kind of my freshman year uh, of college to figure out what that was going to be. And, yeah, you know, I, I was going to classes. I was doing well. Um, but then the turning point there in college was over Christmas break. Um, I had asked uh, a Santa, my parents, for um for a domain name for Christmas. And that was aimface.com. And I, cause I realized so many people were using AOL instant messenger that there was probably something there that, that I could create and, and, and earn from create, create a, a, a flow of cash into, into my bank. And uh, that's what I did for, for a few months. I started making the, the buddy icons with the, the aim smiley. And uh, it caught on, it caught on. And I was reaching out to other websites that were kind of in that space, you know, getting linked, trying to get traffic to it. And uh, finally it, it, it got to a critical mass. It got to a point, a boiling point where it just spilled over. And I, from that point on, um, I was no longer actually making the things, the, the, the buddy icons that went on the website. I had people wanting to put buddy icons on there. And at that point, I had so much traffic coming through um, that my hosting was not uh, able to keep up. And so I had to upgrade my my hosting and I started selling advertising on on the on the website. I started selling advertising spots and uh, I, I remember, you know, there were these different agencies, these marketing agencies reaching out to me, trying to buy the spaces. I even went through. Uh, an ad selling platform, uh, and, and this was this was way before AdSense, uh, Google's stuff, and uh, it, it it was great. Here I was, uh, a freshman, uh, sophomore in college, and I'm making more money than I know what to do with, and and I don't, you know, people are asking me to send them invoices, and I'm I'm thinking, what what? You mean I have to create invoices? You're not just going to send money to me? And so I, you know, I, I had all these lessons <laughs> of business operations um, that w- was just this other side of business that I didn't realize I needed to know. And, you know, getting into, you know, you know, taxes and everything I had to, I hear I wanted to blow all the money on new computer parts and going to land parties. I mean, I was I was quite the, the computer nerd at the time and um yeah, I mean, the long story short there is I, I kind of got what I wanted. I was able to be the successful online teenage entrepreneur. But once I got there, I really did not know what to do next. I had no no clue. I had no guidance. I didn't have mentor, even though, you know, I had I had parents who were operating their own business and family members are doing it. I didn't know the questions to ask. Uh, it was earlier on in in the, the the period of being your own online entrepreneur. I couldn't simply search online for answers. Uh, and so I, I, I basically I got to the point where here I've got this this mess of of a business that's that's successful. Um, I've got the pressure of what am I going to do about college? Because now I'm spending all my time. Uh, running the, these, this website and actually it grew to multiple websites that I was running. And I, I basically finally went to my parents and asked, you know, what do I do? And it was, it was clear. I was either going to fail out of college and do what continue to do what I was doing and do it, you know, better or 
let it go and get back into school and com- finish school. And um, I kind of caved. I caved in. I, I sold everything. I sold the websites and, and completely got out of it. I, I was so scared. I sold everything for way less than I should have. Um, but I was happy to to clean my hands of it. And I basically lived off of what I uh, had uh, accumulated and, and sold everything for in revenue, lived off of it for about a year and got my grades back up, got back into school. And then finally, I got a job working for the university and uh, looking at graduation. I decided, um, you know, OK, let, let's graduate. I had a girlfriend. I wanted to get married. And uh, so I did. I graduated and the university then uh, not so long after, because I was working for them as an undergrad, offered me a uh, position uh, wor- working for the university. And I and I and I took it. I took it because it was the easy route. And I thought, this is my life now. This is what I'm going to do. And it was OK for about two years. Um, you know, I had gotten married, started a family um, moved back to my hometown and, and it was okay. It was okay. And, and it wasn't until, uh, two years later that I kind of took a step back and looked at things and realized that I just was not enjoying what I was doing. The it, things were really just not going. My life was not going in the direction that I thought it was going to be going. And it wasn't, it wasn't that big of a deal. I and I realized later, probably a couple more years later, that it was because I was in a rut. I just kind of accepted my fate and I didn't have the the there wasn't a challenge there that made me think, what in the hell am I doing with my life? And but it finally showed itself. It started showing itself because of all the success I had had as that undergrad teenager, uh, you know, running these websites in, in college, um, I had local business owners coming to me saying, please do whatever you were doing there for our business. We will pay you. We'd be happy to pay you to, to get that type of exposure uh, to our business. And um, I, I was like, OK, well, that, that's fine. And I kind of did that on the side. I did that on the side um, and, and, it, and it was well. And I realized, you know, I kind of enjoy this. I kind of enjoy this. Um, you know, maybe there's something here that I can do down the road. And, and I didn't really market it. I didn't turn it into, into anything. I did form a, a business to operate through. Um, and that was was Meteorite. Meteorite uh, was this business on the side uh, from my my main job that just kind of whenever somebody called saying hey you know come make a website for our business uh, I was like okay and the, you know and did it in the evenings and 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 uh, it flowed through meteorite um, but uh, around 2010 um, you know I I have been looking online and I've been seeing people be successful doing the same things I had done you know at two in the year 2000. And I'm realizing that none of it had changed. It's 10 years later. None of that has changed. If I would have continued doing what I was doing and just got better at it, that I could have, I could have, my, my, my position, my situation in life would be much different than it was currently. And that was kind of the kicker. That was me finally kicking myself in the butt for, and regretting the decision that I had made to to finish school when I had already kind of figured out a lot of things. I just didn't know it. I wasn't aware that I had the right answers at the time for running a business, for for seeking new things, for for being that entrepreneur. And and it was really because the being an entrepreneur, the word entrepreneur was not part of my vocabulary. I was more attracted to um, just the word success, you know, doing something, having, having attention on me for doing something well. I wanted the glory of it. And, and I can't say that I, that I'm any different now. I I still want to do things that I know people are going to be proud of me for doing. 
Um, and that probably sounds very selfish and it, and it is, but that ultimately is, you know, where things start for me. I, I want people to be proud of me. I want to be proud of me. I want my parents to be proud of me, you know, and, and I want my family. I want my wife to be proud of me. I want my wife's family to be proud of me. Um, that that's, that's very important to me. And yeah, I'm, I'm here telling you this now and I'm not embarrassed to say it. Um, but it's still, you know, at the end of the day, that only goes so far. It, it, it's still not going to make me jump out of bed in the morning. Uh, there, there's, there's more to it. And so, but, you know, back to the story here, um, at the end of 2010, um, due to the the economic downturn here worldwide, I uh, w- was let go of Purdue, and I had some options there, but the the all the arrows, all signs were pointing to Chris. You need to get back and do what you enjoy, and be the entrepreneur, and be out there on your own. And uh, you know, leading up to leaving my position with the university. Um, I did look for another job. I, I, I looked for a couple, you know, I was interviewed a couple times and, and ultimately I, 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 I turned down some things because I knew I was going to get back into where I wasn't happy before. And I didn't want to do that again. I was scared to death of doing that again. I thought it was going to kill me. Uh, that's how, how scary doing something like that, uh, felt it was far less scarier to go out there and risk everything to do it all on my own and have a family behind me that I had to care and provide for. That was far less scarier. Um, and so that's what I did. I meteor got it jumped into meteorite full time. And I was still so inexperienced in, in running a, a real business um, that I didn't know what to do next. I, I didn't know what to do next. I thought, well, maybe I'll just start, you know, cold calling. And I didn't even know it was called cold calling at the time. I'll just, I'll just start calling people. And I did. And I failed miserably. It was awful. I mean, I can remember sweating, holding the phone and shaking, hoping that they can't hear me shaking. Uh, and it was so bad. Now, in, you know, in, in, in retrospect, um, that, that those, those, situations could have gone a lot better. I could have been, <laughs> I could have learned a lot of things if I just knew what to look for. And, um, and it, it, you know, if you've been an entrepreneur for any period of time, whether you think you are or, or not, um, you, there's a point where you realize I've got to learn something if I want to get better at this. And, and I did, I finally realized, you know what, there's probably groups out there of people who have the same problem I do, and I need to look for them. And I did. I found them immediately because uh, I realized I needed to. That's what I needed to look for. It's it's one of those situations where you don't know you have the problem uh, I- until you realize it. And so I uh, I re- definitely realized I had that problem. I needed business <laughs> if I wanted to be able to pay my bills. And so I started business networking. I, I did. I, I just went to little groups, l- listened to other people. And the, the funny thing was that, you know, here I was learning some things, but a lot of the things that were being said and asked and talked about at these at these meetings were the realization for me was here. I was hearing from people who were twice my age or or more who are having problems that I've already dealt with, uh, you know, long ago, even before I stepped out on my, on my own. And, uh, you know, what still things that I learned even back in the year, you know, 2000 running websites online. And it just, it, it, it just, it, it blew me away. I thought this was common sense. I thought this was stuff everybody knew. And, and that's me just, you know, assuming things. And as, as we all know, you know, when you make assumptions, it, it, it makes an ass out of you and me. And so and here I've been feeling, you know, like an idiot for a long time with, with a failure of a business, just continued failures. Why can't I be successful like I was before? And it's because I realized that I was, I was putting myself in a position where I, I, I guess, you know, I, I was that I was comparing myself to things that didn't exist. I, I guess that's the best way to explain it. I was 
thinking that I needed to be this type of business person when I realized I had already been that that type of business person. I needed to keep going. I needed to reach farther. And that's, you know, that's kind of really a theme for anybody's business story of anybody's entrepreneur story is you you realize things and realize, you know what, I'm actually kind of good at that and I need to go on and find something else that's challenging. And so that's kind of where things went. I just kept pushing in my network, you know, who is out there that I need to know? Who do I need to get in touch with? And the, the funny thing is, the, the funniest thing is I worked one summer for a business person and I'm, I'm never going to ne- mention this name and I tell the story a lot, but he was a very shady business guy. He, he was someone that I, I knew I wasn't going to be able to trust. And if I modeled myself like him, I was going to run myself into the ground, but he was very successful. He did very well. He, he knew how to deal with people and there was one thing that he told me that was very sound and that I share with people uh, day in and day out, any opportunity that I have. And it's probably been the the best advice, best, excuse me, the best business advice that I've ever gotten. And that is meet three new people every day. Now, that might sound crazy, to, to, to go out or try to call people, three new people that you've never heard of uh, every day. But the, the point is, is to never stop meeting new people, to never stop creating new relationships. Because when you do that, there's all kinds of potential for opportunity, not necessarily immediately, but over time. And that that right there probably is what saved my business, which ultimately saved my family from from a financial disaster, was when when I would get into a tough point, I would just tell myself, Chris, you need to go meet new people. You need to meet new people and you can't be scared of meeting new people. And so that's what I what I did. I always had that pep talk with myself. You know, you're you're good with people, too. You know, people like you. You like people. You don't have a problem just going up and talking to people. And I know um a lot of people do, and really you you shouldn't because people aren't mean. Most people don't bite, at least in my experience. And um, yeah, you know that that's kind of my best lesson. And but you know I've learned things beyond that. So you know through my story here, um, you know my my we we've had a lot of different things, and even on my on my website on the about page. You can really get into the details because I I did put a lot of detailed information about my story. But, you know, there's been high points. There's been low points. Um, You know, we we my family, we really got hit hard by the the financial um, disaster of 2008, 2009. We got stuck in a house um, where it, it was just impossible to get rid of this house for a long time. We wanted to have it for two years. Um, and then move on to something else. But we ultimately got stuck in that house for seven years. And that house was an anchor. And I had I had options, um, you know, but I, it seemed like the only way out was to wait it out or else destroy my credit. And I really didn't want to do that. I wanted to be re- a responsible uh, adult, uh, business owner, uh, uh, father, husband, I wanted to be financially responsible for for my actions and for the sake of my family and for the sake of my business and the people, you know, the customers and clients that I had. I, I, I feel like I'm accountable to all of these people. And so I, I did. We waited out, waited it out. And we finally we did finally sell the house. And it was it was amazing. <laughs> And I'm so happy that's in the past now. And and there was a big there was a big lesson with that. And I can go on with other lessons, uh, financial lessons. Um, I'm I'm definitely a car guy. I love cars. I had a uh, a very nice, uh, unique Audi, and not completely unique Audi for years, but it it was it was it was a very nice ride. And uh, I I got a lot of attention, a lot of compliments on that car over the years. And, uh, you know, what I, what I learned about cars, uh, and this has really been recent that I, that I learned this because I sold this car only, you know, uh, a few months ago. 
And it's funny when you when you have a car that's that's very attractive and people like it, you the, the, the best way I can explain this is that I was like Gollum from Lord of the Rings with this car. This was my precious. I didn't want anybody to touch it. I didn't want anybody else to drive it. It always had to be clean. It always had to be perfect. Um, I hated driving it because I was putting miles on it, but it was my daily driver. And the more I did business, the more I drove it. And and I just kind of accepted th- that finally, maybe. I don't know. Um, but uh, yeah, <laughs> I had that car for five years and uh, and I loved it. But what happened? When I finally sold it, when I finally accepted, because I, I was thinking of all kinds of scenarios where I could keep that car. Um, but what happened is my family, we decided to grow our family and it was going to be very difficult for, for me to transport uh, a family of four plus a dog and all the baby stuff with, uh, with a little Audi. And I, I finally, I finally decided, you know, what? I need to get rid of this car. I need to get rid of this car. Um, before, before it does anything more emotionally damaging to me. <laughs> and I did, I did. I, 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 I basically, I, I sold it, got a family car. And as far as I'm concerned now, I'm carless. I have no car and my wife has two cars. That's how I feel. And, uh, I, the, the, the what's amazing, the real amazing thing about it it's how much better I feel now that that car has gone. It's, it's funny. Like I told you, I was golem with the ring. It was my precious, but now it's gone. I am free. I am free of the burden of having a car that I obsess over. And, uh, th- that was a very hard lesson to learn. So, uh, I wanted to share that with you because these are things that, you know, as an entrepreneur, you get into a position, you know, as you work hard and you are successful and there are material things that you want, you know, those material things can haunt you. And here, you know, I had a house that was wonderful. I had a car that was wonderful. And both of these things were anchors to me, to, to moving on, to changing and becoming something more than what I was before. And it's, you know, it's now that I've been able to move past that, that I've really understood that. And, and so my outlook on those things has really changed. Do, do I still like those things? Absolutely. I, I love cars. I, I, you know, I, I love when, when my company has clients that are in the automotive industry because I can talk cars. I come, you know, again from family, mem- having family members that love cars uh, grew up in a car family. You know, my dad's had more cars than his company has probably had customers. And, and believe me, that's a lot of freaking cars. And so I grew up in it. And especially when I got to start driving, oh man, I get to drive dad's cars. And, uh, so yeah, but anyways, that's, that's enough of cars, but you know, now I've, I've, I've reached a point in my life where I, I, I've been able to create a lot of relationships, uh, through business, through networking and, and, and as being the entrepreneur, finally understanding that, Hey, I am an entrepreneur. There are things out there. I want to find opportunities. I want to find challenges. I want to make a difference. Um, I've been able to understand that there's really no real difference in any type of relationship that you create. There's some type of value there, you know, and sometimes we put different labels on them. We say we have friendships. Sometimes we have um, business arrangements, um, but they're all relationships. You know, we have customers, we have clients. And, and, and again, there's, there's two differences. There's a difference between a customer and a client. And it all comes down to the relationship and the expectations and the etiquette and all, all this different crap that's there. And, and I kind of just want to push that all out of the way. I want to push it out of the way. Um, I, I do, I want to create experiences. I want to create reasons why people want to connect. And, and I want to seek the people who feel the same way as I do and understand that. And, it, and it's amazing because I can stand in a room of a thousand people and I can, I can see the people who are just, you know, schmoozing or those who are, you know, trying to, to make social, social jumps and not, 
to say there's anything wrong with that. It's just not the person that I am. But I can find the people in the room who are like me and I can connect with them and and understand what they're trying to do. And we can be completely different in our industries and have nothing in the way of being able to do business with each other. But we can sit and talk about being entrepreneurs. We can talk about you know, trying to make a change in the world and seeing that there's a problem out there. Sometimes it's a big problem. It's a worldwide problem or, you know, a countrywide problem that needs to be addressed. And it comes down to, you know, just attitudes, you know, things like that. And I, and so part of doing this by having this podcast, by doing videos, doing the Thursday stops and in the blog posts and everything, just putting all of the resources out there from what I've learned and been able to teach to others is to really take my networking up a level. You know, I talked about, you know, creating new relationships, finding three new people every day to, to create relationships with and just get to know people. And so this is me doing that. This is what this is about. Um, and, and I, I, again, you know, I told you, I like to be, you know, proud of the things that I do and, and, and have others proud of me for doing it. Yeah. I want people to be proud of me of this for doing this. And, um, you know, but at the end of the day, that's still, that's <laughs> still not the reason why I get out of bed in the morning. Um, th- this is, this is, this is great. This is fun to do. But I could easily just walk away from this and go walk through the woods for a week and talk to nobody, you know, take my, my, my wife and son along with me and just enjoy our time at peace there. Um, but then again, you know, it, it's a situation of the grass is greener. There, there are times where I will take a break from bringing on new uh, customers and clients into my company or taking on more consulting. Um, I, it's just, I, I just, I, I get burned out on it. And so I need to do something different. And, and so I'll step, I'll step away. I'll step away. I'll stop and I'll recharge. And it, it doesn't take long as being a small business owner, as being an entrepreneur that you, you understand that you need to do that in order to grow your business and, and to grow as a person. There are times where you need to be able to turn it on and, and times when you need to be able to turn it off. And if you leave it on too long, things go bad. If you leave it off too long, things go bad. And so you need to be able to understand the right times to turn that switch on and off for yourself, for your business, and for for your network, for your relationships. So, yeah, (laughs) I know a lot a lot of this is coming at you and you're probably, you know, you're like, yeah, I understand that. No, I don't understand that. And that's okay. That's okay. Because, you know, I, I'm, I'm the same way. There's a lot of things that I get. There's a lot of things that I don't get about business, about even being a person. And, um, I, I guess that's kind of the beauty of all of it is there's more to learn. There's more to learn. And I can't expect to know everything right now. Um, but as I learn things, it opens up more doors for more learning. And, and I want you to learn that as well and understand those same doors lead to new experiences, to new opportunities. And it all comes back to just meeting new people, not being afraid to go out and talk to others. Um, sometimes you have to be a little scared to, to know that it matters to you. And uh, there's probably millions of positive quotes out there about this subject. Um, and it's very true. It's very true. And sometimes you don't believe it until you've done it uh, or you face that wall to get through or get over. Um, so, yeah. So, you know, thanks. Thanks for listening to this episode of the podcast this far. I know we're about, you know, 40 minutes into into this episode. Um, so that's kind of the synopsis of who I am, who Chris Rissy is and what he's passionate about, what I'm passionate about. I don't need to talk about myself in the third person. Um, but, you know, all of those experiences that I've shared with you and the things that I'm passionate about have given me the ability to approach people um, even off the street. You know, I can get people to give me the weirdest look because they have no idea who I am or why I'm talking to them. Um, but I am so passionate about learning from others and and finding new people to connect with that it won't stop me. It won't stop me 
from from talking to people. And uh, yeah, I want you to be like that too. <laughs> I'm not like that all the time. Sometimes I'm very scared to go do it. And it's 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 when I f- understand that, oh, I'm scared again. Yes, I, this matters to me. This must matter to me. I must be growing. And I get excited to do that. That might, that might sound crazy to you. Maybe it is crazy, but that's who I am. And, and, I, and I like it when others get to that position because sometimes they just need a little bit of push. They need a little bit of reassurance. They need to have permission because I did. I needed permission to do it. I thought that was something always, you know, wrong with me. Why why would somebody want to go out and meet new people when, when they're fine with who they are and who they already know? They've got their friends, they've got their circle of influence. Um and uh you know what what made the difference is reading. Uh, that made all the difference for me. I uh I didn't really take up learning. I w- I want to say as a hardcore way of getting better at business. Until, uh, you know, a little over a year ago, I, uh, my wife had always enjoyed Audible, and, uh, which is an Amazon company where they have uh, audiobooks. And I was like, oh, yeah, you know, whatever. I was, I've never been much of a person to read except out of maybe fantasy, uh, you know, Harry Potter. Um, but then I, and I realized that there was, a, there was a book. There's a book that I've heard a lot of people talking about. They've always recommended it to me. And I was like, okay, let's see, you know, I'll, I'll listen to Audible if that book's on there. And sure enough, it was. It was the E Myth Revisited by Michael Gerber, and uh, I, I listened to it uh, over a few days, and I was like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, this is everything I've needed to hear forever, um, and, and j- just getting the value out of that book. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is so. Uh, this is I've completely untapped this resource. This reading this audiobooks this is this is the answer this is what i need this is what i need i need to learn more i need to focus on learning to get better and uh yeah <laughs> here i am you know at the time i was what 31 32 years old and uh you know being a business owner for years and and going through all the you know the 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 life of being that that teenage entrepreneur and never have i actually thought about picking up and opening a book or listening to a book on audio and from that point on i just got crazy with consuming the next book i read was the 4 hour work week by tim ferriss and i was like oh my gosh you know this is more i'm getting more permission and and i'm realizing i never needed the permission I just was too scared to do it on my own. And here I'm hearing others doing it, um, you know, like well, with Tim talking about outsourcing and, and, and things that I had actually done before, but I, I, I guess I got fearful and, and stopped doing it. And, uh, and I realized, you know, there's nothing really to fear if you seek the answers. That's kind of the important lesson there. And so I've read a lot, read a lot more books. I've got a stack of books, you know, right on my desk. Um, and they've been wonderful books. Some of them are very well known. Some of them are not so well known. And uh, I, I, I created a re- reading list on my website um, because these are the books that mattered to me at the time that I needed them. And uh, so I did do a lot of reading there uh, for a while, but then I stopped because, you know, the, the, the worst part about reading and learning is to never do anything with it. And that that's kind of a hard lesson for entrepreneurs, because once you start seeking knowledge and learning new things, it doesn't do you any good to spend your time doing that if you're not going to take action on it. That that's that is a hard lesson to learn, um, but it's a great one. The sooner you can take action on, on things that you learn, even if you read a book once and just learn, pick up one thing from it, you don't even have to finish the book. If you just learn something in the first chapter and start doing it and and assimilating it into your processes, into the systems that you have in your business and the person that you are, then you're going to see a difference. And so then it's up to you to then go back and learn something else, then apply it again. You know, if you just learn 10 things, odds are you're only going to remember three of them. And it's, you know, you're lucky enough if you take action on one. So you're better to just take it slow with your learning and apply the things as quickly as you can to see if they will work for you or if not. And if you need to go back and learn something different. 
Okay, well, you know, that's probably enough, I think, of, you know, talking about who I am, what I do, what I'm passionate about. I can't even talk now. And I'm, I'm just going to leave that in that because that's the type of person that I, that I am. Um, this is me just, you know, shooting from the hip, shooting from the hip, recording, talking to you, uh, talking to my listeners. Um, but, you know, before I go, you know, I told you, you know, some some reasons why I do this. But ultimately, why I'm doing this, why I, I'm I'm doing ChrisRissy.com, the Be The Experience podcast, the Thursday Stop videos, the resources, networking with people is be is for my my son and my my children, my my future daughter who's going to be born soon and any possible future children that I might have. Um, you know, being being a, being the entrepreneur, understanding that I am the entrepreneur now. And watching my son and who he is and how much he's like me has been amazing. And thinking about his future and listening to my father talk about me and my father talk about the challenges he had and my grandfather talking about the challenges he had. You know, we we always try to share things, but we can't always remember exactly the way it was. Um, I wanted to to create a resource for my my children that has all the answers that they can go back to that dad was was doing and thinking and and the people that he knew and what was the the concern at the time um, in his businesses and with the world and with small business and with entre- entrepreneurialism. Um, I want them to know that. I want them to have the answers that 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 took me forever to find that that I couldn't get from my father that my father had to learn for himself that my grandfather had to learn from himself for himself and for every other business person out there you know you know whether you're old or young man or woman you know it doesn't matter where you come from if you have a passion to to make something happen to make a difference in the world and do that through through creating a business through creating a solution a service a product whatever it is then you know I want I want to help get those answers. Um, you know that's 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 where where I'm at. So okay, well that concludes this episode, episode 15 of uh, what's what <laughs> what was the Chris Rissy podcast is now and is now going to be the Be the Experience podcast. You know that means I gotta I've got to create new uh, show intros and outros. Well, I better get to work on that. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, so uh, I would encourage you to head over to chrisrissy.com if you haven't been there before um, and subscribe because, you know, as I said, you know, I, I've been sharing a lot of things, but there are a lot of other things that I haven't talked about yet that I that are coming um, there. I've got, you know, here, here's a little bit of insight on what's up to come. I've got some tools. I've got some tools I've been working on for small business that uh, are are created for actual small businesses. And I want to make them useful to every small business person who might be seeking them. I've also got some giveaways. You know, I told you I learned so much from reading and uh, I, I want to do some some book giveaways. I actually, you know, know some authors and have acquired some of their books and uh, I've even got them autographed and I want to share them. But I don't want to just give away books. I want to give away books uh, for the right reasons to the right people who who are seeking the knowledge that is in that is you know between those pages. And uh, so yeah, I, I, these things are only going to be available to to my to my subscribers. So well, uh, hey, if you you know, like I said, I'm always about building the relationships. If you want to get in touch with me, I am here to be in touch with. So get on Twitter. If you're not on Twitter, send me a tweet uh, once you get an account. <laughs> but if you don't, you can always contact me through the website at Um, And if, but again, if you're on Twitter, hey, my, my screen name's easy. It's at Chris Rissy. Okay, well, that is the end, the absolute end. And maybe now you know a little bit more of the reason why I have this motto. And it is, be the experience, master your business, 
and I'll talk to you next time. You just listened to the Chris Rissy Podcast. Get past podcast episodes and more. Visit ChrisRissy.com. Be the experience. Master your business.